I want to show you how I put together this watercolour sketchbook. It's a concertina sketchbook, so it's got a front cover, back cover, but no spine, so it opens both ways. So you can flick through it this way, paint on it, paint on it. You could paint a long painting if you wanted to. And then the beauty of it is that you can turn it over and turn paint on it on both sides, which of course, when you're using beautiful quality watercolor paper, you can do that. You can paint on both sides. Here are the sheets that I've folded up. I have some full sheets of 100 GSM, 190 GSM Saunders Waterford. This one is hot press, so beautifully smooth. And I've cut a full sheet into three strips. See there? and there and then I'm going to glue them together and I so have important stuff to tell you about the glue. I cut these edges because it was just a bit faster than tearing and it's such a long edge I just found that easier. So that's my rag for the wax. I'll come back to the wax in a second. So there's the finished product. That's the paper that goes in the middle. Here's the end pieces. So you can see here I began with two pieces of cardboard this was a painting that goes like that. You can see how it kind of joined together and it was a half sheet exactly like this one here. I got two pieces of cardboard. I cut the paper first because I knew that I could make the covers any size but I wanted to get the most value out of my watercolour paper because that's the a very expensive part of the concertina book. So two pieces of cardboard and then I cut in half one of these paintings, one of my half sheet paintings that I thought might look beautiful as a cover and then I bound them over this. The very first step that I did was take the painting and seal it with some cold wax medium. I'm just going to turn that on the side so you can see that. Cold wax medium, this brand is Gamblin, but there's a number of brands that you can buy and all of them are completely brilliant for sealing watercolour paintings. There's a number of ways you can seal watercolour paintings, but this method where you get this cold wax, it's not the cheapest method, but by golly, it's fail proof. I'm going to Got a rag, I'm gonna stick it in there. And then you just, oops. <laughs> I just put it straight on. Oh, these rags make it a bit of a mess because they're towels, but don't worry about that. So you rub the wax on, wax on, wax off. You have to be old to understand that reference, don't you? Wax on. And it just puts this really beautiful sheen all over the watercolour paper. It doesn't make it any easier to bend, unfortunately, but it definitely will seal the watercolour. And that means that when you've got your cover for your watercolour book, it's not going to be subject to little drips of paint or if anything happens to it, you could kind of clean it a little bit and it's definitely going to be water resistant. And I think that's about as good as you can get. Right, I'm going to get a bit more so you can see about how much I'm putting on. You can actually, with this cold wax medium, I'm just gathering up that rag. With this cold wax medium, you can go and go and go and add multiple layers. And uh, if you do that, they, the layers build up and become really, really shiny, which I love that idea. That, uh, that it could, but that would require more time and more uh, wax medium. And this wasn't super cheap, this cold wax medium. I'm, apologies for not remembering the actual price, but I'm just gonna put a little extra on. And I don't have to go completely to the edges because the edges will end up being folded right in and then the watercolour paper is going to be glued onto the back like that. It even looks beautiful like that. I quite like this. Um, it seem, feels like you're doing something lovely for your watercolour uh, painting and for your watercolour paper. Of course, you can cover your book in any way you like. And there are so many videos you can look up and on how to make your, uh, how to cover a book uh, cover.
I'm <laughs> saying cover a lot. Okay, I'm just rubbing that in. I don't know if you're supposed to wait for it to dry. Uh, I do let it dry because I just assume you have to, but I'd have to read this, the instructions here. And on this particular tin, I would say that that's not 10 point, it's not eight point text, it's not, it's, it's like six point text. So even with my glasses on, I'm going to have a lot of trouble uh, reading what the hell it says there, except for the, sex, for the fact that it says um, it's made of beeswax. You're just rubbing wax all over it and uh, it's called cold wax. And this particular brand does not smell too bad. It smells like wax, funnily enough. Okay, that's good. Now I've need to get off those bits of fluff. And I'm just kind of polishing with a drier part of my rag. Making sure it's even. All right. So I'm gonna set that aside to dry for a bit, get this lid on. The glue that I love to use all the time because it doesn't bend my paper much, or doesn't bend my paper, generally, <laughs> is this craft glue. Really spread it out, particularly on a lighter weight paper like this one. This one's 190 GSM. I don't think it will matter near so much when it comes to my 300 GSM. Here is the glue that I've just uh, started to use and it's called Art Glitter Adhesive. It says it is water-based and it's definitely acid-free. You really want acid-free. But what I loved about it is this incredibly fine nib and it comes with a nib. I'll just turn that around so you can see that nib. It's a nice small hole. You don't have to poke it yourself. And um, it came out in a really lovely fine uh, bead and that meant that when I glued the next lot of pages together, there was less bulking. You could use a glue stick if you wanted to for the paper, but it's ne the problem with glue stick is that if you've got a smooth paper, fine. If you've got anything rough, so the next lot of pages I'm gluing are cold pressed, so you've got a little bit of texture. And that means that your glue stick is um, it may not adhere well. The other thing is that I wanted this to glue really strongly and a glue stick may struggle to keep it there. It's not a strong glue glue stick, so many applications for it. Whereas these two glues are really strong and uh, I'm in love with them. This just says craft glue, but it's so much better than other uh, craft glues that can make your paper bubble and warp. One other thing that I want to tell you about is that this paper is, um, that's covered it, this painting was done on 300 GSM. And that means that, can you see there, when you fold it and you fold it hard, I've got a bone folder that I did all my folding with, then the paper can crack. Uh, so a couple of things you can do, you can wet the paper and then it will bend a little better. But I really didn't want to risk uh, something buckling, moving, etc. And also, once I'm into the uh, whatever activity I'm doing, whatever project I'm working on, I, I just like to get it done sometimes. So I just bend it as I go, and then I've got this edge. So I wanted to show you how I treat that edge, and I've done it on this one. I don't know if you can just see that there's a silver edge to this one, but that's just ink. So I'm going to ink these edges because I've remembered tiny bit of ink is the way to go. So these are little daubers. So you stick your finger in it. And I've got a blue one here. Uh, it looks like a very bright blue. So I might just double check what that is. Got a bit of scrap paper here. What will that look like? If I put that around the edge, yeah, it's really phthalo, isn't it, in comparison to that one. I'm going to get a colour that coordinates a little better. Ooh, there is some lovely soft purples in there. Let's see what this looks like. Mm, it's not much ink left. I'm a... Oh, that's really 
I've loved this one. I'm just I want all I want to do is get that edge. Will purple look nice? Yeah, I think that'll look. I'm just going to get a little more and daub. Oh yeah, it's lovely. I just want to get rid of that white edge and just adds just takes away from the look of um, I don't know kind of telling the telling part that you've folded over a piece of paper I think it looks a little more professional I do this on all sorts of um, projects these little daubers and a little bit of ink my other tip to you about when you're inking stuff up is don't use the whole ink pad <laughs> and I know this from experience if you use the whole ink pad it takes forever to dry I'm just looking on this side as well F absolutely forever to dry so definitely worth a little dauber or you know finding some other way to put it on I'm just checking there's no little white bits that I'm going to look at I didn't do a superb job on that corner so I might just put a little more ink there that'll do put that over there I don't want that to touch my paper I want to keep the paper beautifully pristine and then I'm going to do the same over here doesn't really need it on the back but those corners look better when I've just added that little bit of ink just do over this side as well it really doesn't take very long but you never have to look at the bent edge ever again the Part of the reason for using high quality paper in these watercolour concertina sketchbooks is that it's archivally sound. So when you come to make something that's really lovely and someone wants it, so either you sell it or you give it away, whatever happens, you know that it's going to remain that exact beautiful colour, that quality, because it's archivally sound. I'm just triple checking my fingers before <laughs> handling the beautiful paper. Alrighty. There's little bits of dust there. Okay, I'm just going to put them together in the way I would like them to turn. So do I want it to turn? Will it be glued here? Yes. It'll be glued here to the cover and then it'll go like that and straight into this one. Now if you wanted to save on some paper, you could just do a fold over edge and um, use up less paper. But I quite liked the idea of them interlocking and making them really lovely and strong. I'm just interlocking them now, not that way, that way and that way and there okay just check that it's all lovely and straight oh, it's beautiful turn it over and over it's just even pleasurable to be turning it I'm moving that one right out of the way and that's going on to that therefore I'm going to glue this down so I'm going to open it over here so no glue can get flicked around and I'm going to put a fine bead all the way really fine but nice and close to the edge just spread that little lump out a bit Just spreading it out so it's a little more even. And then put it on. And I'll make sure it's beautifully lined up, which it is. Check nothing's squeezing out anywhere. Turn it over. 
and this is the next one so that's gluing to that so I'll put the glue down here and again fine line close to the edge and I'm trying to be quite even with the glue there glue glue get rid of it and bring this one down these glues these all craft glues I've found so far give you a little bit of wiggle room glue stick really doesn't give you wiggle room I find generally they attach and pretty much that's it okay I'm just going to put that down I'm going to rub it so that if there's any lumps in the glue not lumps but you know an excess amount that it can spread out a little bit and like that and then I'm ready to attach the cover so this be I can make either one the front or the back which one oh yeah this is definitely going to be the front so I'm now going to put all my glue on there and that is going to go straight over to there I've seen I've I watched a few videos before doing this. I don't have one to recommend in particular, apart from Joanna, ooh, cloth, Joanna, Johanna, that's what she used to say. I'm gonna put some in there as well because that's recessed a little bit. And I really, really love Johanna. That's her name. And she does all sorts of beautiful bookmaking. Her instructions are wonderful. So I watched quite a few books. She doesn't necessarily make this kind of thing. She makes some journals. So if you're into journaling, which I totally am, I'm just double checking as I go and rubbing to make sure that it's perfectly and evenly placed, even border there and there. Actually, I could move it down a little bit, couldn't I? I said there was a little bit of wriggle room and there definitely is, so I can pick it up and I can oh, pull it down just a bit. I think I like that a little more. There. Just really make sure that's great. That's beautifully attached, that's beautifully attached, that's good, that's good. And that one's going to go that way. And each time I'm opening the lid down here, I guess that lid could be slightly improved, couldn't it? It's a little difficult to pull on and off for me. But I guess they've got to make sure it's strong. Just again, spreading out that glue and putting excess into this recessed part there. And now I can put it on and match edge to edge. I'm gonna make sure I can stand it up and that it's matchy matchy like so. Like so. Okay, I'm going to just do another double check that it's beautiful. And then I'm going to put it down under a heavy book. Right, I'm just going to rub this in all over. Just triple check that there's lots of contact. Now the other thing that I'd like to tell you that I've been doing, and I do this all the time with glues, in just in case there is a little excess moisture from one of the glues is I put sheets of paper in between anywhere there's a glue. So I'll just show you what I mean. Paper there and there's glue here. So paper in there. And I think I'll slip the paper in there as well but I'll do it on the other side. And there's glue here, there, and then there's glue there. And then I'm going to turn it the other way for the other section. 
just that way, that way. Where's the other glued there? Gosh, I've glued it so nicely, it was hard to see. The glue paper there, and there's the other piece there. Now I'm going to put it back together. And go and get a heavy book and glue it down. And um, I tend to leave it there for days at a time. It's winter here at the moment. I'm just pressing down as I'm talking. It's winter here at the moment. So everything dries a little slower. It's uh, cold and it's really important to be keeping that in mind because drying times are completely uh, slowed down. <laughs> what I'm going to do with these uh, sketchbooks is put them up on my website. So the next one I make will be made from this painting and I'll cut it in half, make the front and the back. I'll make sure that boat is on the front. I quite love that. So then uh, there will be quite a few of them ready. I'm loving the purple now that I put on the edges there. Ah, there we go. I've made two of sketchbooks and now I'm going to go and make a third one. So if you'd like to see what the third one is like, I'm going to put this under a heavy book and uh, show you. No, I'm not. I'm going to have a break. Yeah, I'll put this up on my website. And thank you so much. Put that lid right on. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your support. See you next time, guys. Bye.